December 25th has been a Roman holiday for over 2,000 years, but is it really Jesus' birthday? There are three basic facts about Jesus' birthday in the Bible found in Luke chapter 1. First, the angel Gabriel told Mary she would conceive Jesus when Elizabeth was in her sixth month of pregnancy. Second, Elizabeth's pregnancy started as soon as the ministration of Zacharias was finished. And third, the ministration of Zacharias was the course of Abia. This gives a specific one-month window for the birthday of Jesus. Elizabeth's pregnancy started as soon as the course of Abia was finished. She was in her sixth month of pregnancy when Mary conceived Jesus, and we know the human gestation period from conception to birth is 266 days. So, once we understand when the course of Abia occurred, we can find the month of Jesus' birth. Everyone agrees there are a total of 24 courses. Each course lasted eight days from Sabbath to Sabbath, and the course of Abia, or Abijah, was the eighth course. This is clear in 1 Chronicles 9, 24, 24, 10, 2 Chronicles 23, 8, and in the ancient writings of the Jewish historian Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews, Book 7, Chapter 14, Verse 7. The disagreement is about when the 24 courses started. In the 1977 book, St. Luke, The Date of Christmas and the Priestly Courses at Qumran, the author argues that the 24 courses always started on the first day of Tishri, which is the seventh month of the biblical calendar. And that would mean that the courses would also start every year on the first day of the first month as well. Every solar year has a total of 52 weeks of seven days each. Divide this by two and you have 26 weeks in each half of the year. However, Jesus' family followed the Hebrew calendar, which was lunisolar. It followed both the sun and the moon cycles. And the first month began on the first new moon after the turn or equinox in the springtime. King David wanted to set up a year-round watch at the temple, so he assigned each of 24 priests one full week to stay at the temple. On the Hebrew calendar, there are roughly 25 weeks from the first day of the first month to the first day of the seventh month, and 25 weeks from the seventh month back to the first month. But there's one week during each of those periods when everyone was at the temple. That was the week of unleavened bread in the first month and the week of tabernacles in the seventh month. That leaves a total of 24 weeks needing a watch from the first to the seventh month and again from the seventh month to the first month. So if this is how the priestly courses ran, and it does make sense, then the eighth course would end twice per year, once in the first half of the year and again in the second half of the year. Since Luke 1 says Elizabeth conceived as soon as the course of Abijah ended, this means she conceived as soon as the eighth course ended. In other words, she conceived sometime during the ninth course. The ninth course usually occurs first around Shavuot, which is why some people say Elizabeth conceived on Shavuot. That is possible, but the Bible doesn't give us the exact date. It says she conceived right after the eighth course and when she was in her sixth month of pregnancy, Gabriel told Mary she would conceive Jesus. If Mary conceived Jesus in the same month that Gabriel visited her, then that means Mary's pregnancy started when Elizabeth was in her sixth month. So, using this method, let's find Jesus' next birthday using the ancient biblical calendar. In 2017, the turn of the sun and moon was finished by the full moon of April 11th, so the new moon of April 26th was the first day of the first month in the Northern Hemisphere. This means the first weekly course would start on April 26th and end on the seventh day of the month, the Sabbath, on May 2nd. Course 2 would then start on the Sabbath of May 2nd and end on May 9th. May 9th through the 16th would be the week of unleavened bread, which means everyone would be at the temple and no scheduled watch would be needed. Course 3 would then start after unleavened bread from May 16th through May 23rd. And following this pattern, the 8th course would run from June 20th through the 27th, and the ninth course would run from June 27th to July 4th, 2017.
That would represent the week that Elizabeth conceived, the Hebrew third month, sometime between days 4 to 11. This would have been the start of Elizabeth's first month of pregnancy, which means Elizabeth's sixth month of pregnancy would start between days 4 to 11 of the eighth month. In 2017, that window started on November 21st and ended December 28th. And that window represents what would have been Elizabeth's sixth month of pregnancy and the month Mary conceived Jesus. Human gestation is 266 days from conception to birth. So we simply count 266 days from November 21st and 266 days from December 28th to end up with the window for Jesus' birthday from August 15th to September 20th, 2018. But that's only one possible window. There would actually be two possible windows for Jesus' birth every year if the 24 courses started on both the first day of the first month and the first day of the seventh month. This is because there are two different ninth courses each year. In 2017, the first set of 24 weeks ended on October 17th, and then the new moon of the seventh month occurred on October 19th. The next 24 courses then would have started with the first course on October 19th, and this seventh month in the Northern Hemisphere is the first month in the Southern Hemisphere, so the Sabbath day is also reset. The first course would have lasted from October 19th to the Sabbath of October 25th, and the second course from October 25th to November 1st. Then the week of tabernacles in the Northern Hemisphere is the same week of unleavened bread in the Southern Hemisphere, when everyone would have been at the temple from November 1st through the 8th. Then if course 3 started the following week from November 8th through the 15th, the 8th course would run from December 13th through the 20th, and the ninth course from December 20th through the 27th, 2017. And this would have represented the second possible window for the start of Elizabeth's pregnancy, right after Shavuot in the Southern Hemisphere. The window for Elizabeth's sixth month of pregnancy then would have started on May 17th through June 22nd, 2018. And that represented the window of time when Jesus was conceived, which then gives us a birthday window for Jesus 266 days later from February 7th to March 15th, 2019. If we follow this from year to year using the ancient biblical calendar, we can see that Jesus was conceived either in November, December, or May, June of the Roman calendar, and born either in August, September, or February, March of the Roman calendar. On the ancient Hebrew calendar, the window for Jesus' birthday was either in the 11th and 12th month or the 5th and 6th months. Neither of those possible windows will ever fall near the Roman date of December 25th. The 24 courses can be interpreted in other ways, but regardless, no one knows the date of Jesus' birth, only the month. Christmas Day and the modern holiday season is a celebrated combination of the ancient festivals of Saturnalia, Sol Invictus, Yule, North Mythology, shamanic traditions in northern Siberia, and finally, one of the two possible time periods when Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb. For more information on the ancient origins of Christmas or the ancient Hebrew calendar, you can see the links at the end of this video. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you liked this video, please consider providing support using the link below. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later.